Good afternoon and good evening, everybody, wherever you may be in the world. Welcome to this webinar entitled Highlights from WCA 2024. It's the second in a series of websites which looks at some of the themes, some of the key takeaways from the World Congress, which was held in Singapore earlier this year. My name is Wayne Morris, and I am the immediate past president of WFSA. I finished my term at the World Congress in Singapore. I'm just going to start my slides. Apologies, just one second, please. Now, I hope you can all see those yes. slides. So that's the opening we slide for this webinar. I'd like to just uh, highlight that we have simultaneous translation into Spanish and also French. We have four wonderful interpreters helping us with this. If you would like to hear the webinar in Spanish or French, go to the globe icon at the bottom of the Zoom stream and click on either Spanish or French. I'd like to now welcome our speakers for the uh, for this webinar. Our first speaker, Dr. Carolina Haylock War Law, is the WFSA president elect. She can't be with us in real time this evening, but. Carolina has sent a video message, which we will play shortly. We also have Dr. Chong Chin Ted, who was a member of the WCA 2024 Organizing Committee. Uh, Chin uh, Ted, would you like to give us a wave, please? Uh, then Associate Professor T. Lian Ka, who was also a member of the Congress Organizing Committee and co-chair of the scientific committee and finally last but not least we have professor tony jin who was also a co-chair of the scientific committee of wfsa uh, wca 2024 so thank you to all our speakers for uh, agreeing to present during this webinar here's the agenda for this evening after a couple more words from me we're going to see the video from Carolina, then we're going to hear the speakers in the order of Dr. Chong, Dr. Associate Professor T, and Professor Jin, and then we will have time at the end for discussion and Q&A. So please think of questions as the webinar progresses. I'd like just to make a few comments about WCA 2024, which was held in March and it was held in Singapore, co-hosted by the Singapore Society and also WFSA. It was truly a global Congress. We had over 5,000 in-person participants and these participants came from 142 countries, a truly remarkable number. We had almost 600 virtual delegates. We also had over 150 scholars, and these scholars were or are young colleagues who were supported to attend the Congress. Some of these colleagues are the scholars attended in person, and some were virtual scholars. And then look at the scientific program. We had 535 faculty from 73 countries, amazing global representation and 189 sessions. And I'll let you read the rest of those bullet points. So I want to keep this webinar moving. So we're going to go straight on and hear from Dr. Carolina haylock Law. So Rosa, could you perhaps mm -hmm. play the video for us? Hello, everyone. Greetings from Honduras, Central America. On behalf of the WFSA, welcome to the wrap-up webinar of our recent World Congress of Anesthesia held in Singapore in March 2024, hosted by the Singaporean Society of Anesthesia, an event where scientific excellence and innovation converge. I'm Carolina haylock Lower President-Elect of the WFSA, co-chair of the WCA 2024 Scientific Committee. And I am thrilled to introduce to you our world-class services. 
At the WFSA, we pride ourselves on delivering cutting-edge solutions that drive success and exceed expectations. Our commitment to excellence is evident in everything we do. This year, Congress brought together 527 STEAM faculty members with an impressive 41% being female, reflecting our commitment to diversity and inclusion. Our speaker's theme of dedicated professional is at the heart of the success. With a diverse range of expertise and a shared passion for innovation, we work together to achieve remarkable results and improve safe anesthesia care for our patients. With 18 specialized tracks and the highly anticipated World Anesthesia Games, feature world leading faculty from over 70 countries, offering a truly global perspective on medical advancement. The breadth and depth of the program were unparalleled, covering a wide array of topics from groundbreaking research to practical clinical application. For the first time, the World Congress of Anesthesia industry leadership had a scientific session to discuss what they envisage as the following stages of technology to impact clinical anesthetic practice and what can we expect in 2040. Feedback from 2,441 post-Congress survey respondents highlighted the exceptional quality of the sessions. An impressive 1,651 participants stated that the sessions were very much supported by high scientific evidence, while 743 felt they were somewhat supported. From the respondents, an overwhelming 90% stated that WCA 2024 was either useful or extremely useful for their professional activity. This feedback underscores the progress impact on advance in the field of anesthesia and improving patient care worldwide. As we reflect on the success of WCA 2024 in Singapore, we are reminded of the power of collaboration in putting together a statement for complex zones the power of innovation and scientific excellence. Together we can, and together we are shaping the future of Anastasia, one groundbreaking session at a time. Thank you for being part of this extraordinary journey, heartfelt gratitude to the Singaporean Society of Anastasia. Thanks to our honorable speakers, to the WFSA Secretariat and all the logistics staff that made it possible. We look forward to welcoming you to the next World Congress of Anesthesiology in 2026 at Marrakesh. I wish you a successful webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Carolina for that video message. I watched it earlier today. It's now my honor to introduce our first real-time speaker, and that is Dr. Chongqin Ted. Uh, Chin Ted was a member of the Congress Organising Committee and he works at Tan Tok Seng Hospital in Singapore. Over to you, Chin Ted. Uh, thank you, Wayne. Please give me a second as I tr uh, share my slides. Okay, uh, Rosa, could you please tell me whether you can see the slides? Yes. We can see okay. the first slide. Okay, thank you. So I just want to thank uh, Wayne as well as WFSA for inviting me to share on some of my experiences uh, organizing uh, the uh, various aspects of the WCA. In particular, I was rather intimately involved with the neuroscience track as well as the global health track. I was also involved in organizing um, a part of the social event. Essentially, that was the fun run around the um, iconic Marina Bay Sands. So I shall share by showing some photos because I believe um, a picture is worth a thousand words. So as I go along sharing the photos, I'll provide some description. If you have any questions, do feel free to um, put, it, uh, put a note on the chat or uh, ask us later on. Okay, going down uh, my slides. Okay, so um, first of all, of course, the um, program would consist of uh, not just the didactic lectures, but also the workshops. 
So um, I was involved in organizing uh, the neuroscience workshop, which was fully subscribed. Together with our colleagues from Cleveland um, Clinic, uh, Dr. Shobana, uh, we organized a simulation workshop uh, focusing on uh, intraoperative or rather perioperative neurologic emergencies. We put through all the participants, uh, more than 20 of them, through various neurologic emergency scenarios and tested them on their responses. Some of the scenarios include, for example, um, intracranial hemorrhage in a uh, parturient, uh, as well as a difficult airway after a cervical spine surgery. So these were some of the very challenging scenarios that we put the participants through. These are very typical neurosurgical emergencies. Um, at the end of it, uh, we, had a very, we had a very happy uh, feedback session. All the participants were very happy. Um, importantly, we held our simulation center off-site. So this provides us with the entire suite of facilities, uh, including the um, uh, high-fidelity mannequins, as well as the simulation tech specialists who provided very uh, valuable support to drive the simulation. Um, our participants really range from across uh, Asia-Pacific to Europe, as well as the Americas, as well as uh, Africa. Really a very international um, uh, 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 audience uh, that we managed to attract. So I believe for the um, organizers in uh, Morocco, um, yes, it would be good to have some sort of uh, simulation workshops uh, uh, when we but when we you know go over to uh, Morocco for the next World Congress, um, uh, with regards to the didactics, we partnered various uh, um important organizations across the world. Uh, this included the Snack Society, which is the Society for Neuroscience as well as Career Care, which is a uh, base mainly in America. We also partnered with the Asian uh, Neuroscience and Career Care Society to come up with a uh, session or a track. This was headed by Professor Kawaguchi from Japan. Um, and we had speakers from Singapore, Japan, Thailand, uh, uh, chairing uh, the session on pain management for neurosurgical procedures. So other than the academic uh, um, knowledge that uh, we shared with the audience, uh, and this was in fact a full house despite it being on the last day of the Congress, it was also an opportunity for the Asian um, neuroscience uh, community to get together uh, once again at the World Congress. So we have speakers, as I mentioned, from Thailand, from Japan, and then we have also um, uh, other SNAC members coming to share their uh, experiences and their insights with us during the Q&A. Uh, these members would be including those from uh, Malaysia as well as the Philippines, as well as uh, South Korea. So it was indeed a very, very fruitful session, uh, the SNAC uh, track, which was held under the neuroscience uh, program. We also had uh, UK um, uh, people from the UK in the audience and, uh, arising from uh, our talk, uh, our SNAC talk. Actually, we have now uh, sort of like established link with the... Um, Neuroscience uh, Society with UK, and there was an intention to try to uh, come together for more uh, intercontinental uh, collaboration uh, in terms of uh, uh, conferences as well as webinars. Um, so this is the, um, the, the panel of uh, the snack, okay? And uh, it was really, really a very uh, uh, fruitful session for us. With regards to the global health uh, track, uh, I was one of the co-chair together with uh, Dr. Angela Onright as well as uh, Dr. Rob Medigal. Um, They are from Canada and Australia respectively. Um, in fact, the two that I mentioned, they are giants in the global health community. So um, really they drove the program and uh, they also uh, guided in terms of uh, judging of the posters, uh, ensuring that the program remained rigorous and relevant uh, to the um, anesthesiologists uh, who are uh, heavily involved in uh, the field of global health. Um, I was also involved in the um, organizing one of the social events. So one of the social events that we had, and this may, I'll be looking forward to having a fun run in, in Marrakesh, for example, around their iconic uh, sites. So we had uh, Professor Chan and uh, Professor Wayne Morris who flagged us off 
uh, at the uh, dawn, okay, around the Marina Bay. So this was one of the highlights of our social uh, events on the uh, on the otherwise already very um, academic and very um, uh, uh, fruitful uh, academic program. We had a bit of fun, by the way, as well. So this was just the run that we had. And we had winners. It's almost like a mini Olympics at that time. And uh, yeah, at the end of it, uh, when the sun has finally risen, we had another group photo. Um, it was also a, a very, very enriching experience. Uh, I think uh, other than the very great um, academic knowledge, I think the World Congress also provides a platform for um, participants from the various continents, the various countries to come together, uh, to bond uh, together, okay, uh, because uh, truly we are one big uh, community. Okay, so this is the end. This is as much uh, as I would like to share, but I'll be glad to have uh, some questions later on. Thank you very much, Wayne. Thank you very much, Chin Ted, for an overview of two really great tracks during the Congress, but also mentioning the social events. And I really liked your comment about the global anesthesia community at the end and the importance of us coming together. I'm, we're going to move straight on to Associate Professor T. Lian Ka. Uh, Lian Ka was a member of the Congress Organising Committee as well, and also a co-chair of the Scientific Committee for the World Congress in Singapore. Uh, Lian Ka works at in the National University Hospital in Singapore. Over to you, Lian Ka. Yes, thank you, Wayne, and thank you, everyone, for participating. I will share my, my reflections of the uh, WCA, which was held earlier this year. So a little bit uh, journey back in history. How it started was that straight after we won the Singapore won the bid to host uh, the WCA 2024 at Hong Kong, a year later in 2017, uh, Professor Adrian Gelb, who was then president of the World Federation, came down with the CEO of the uh, World Federation and met us uh, as we scouted the uh, potential site. So you can see from this Twitter feed um, in 2017, we, 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 the original team of us, uh, Professor Chan, who was our, our, our local president, myself and Dr. Yim, as well as the then president of the Singapore Society of Anesthesia, met to, to have a look at Suntec City uh, as a potential venue. But unfortunately, as you know, change is inevitable. By the time we were ready to get working, uh, COVID-19 reached Singapore on the 23rd of February of 2020. In fact, uh, for one week, uh, Singapore had the most number of COVID-19 cases anywhere in the world. Uh, I shortly published this paper in the Canadian Journal about how to handle a COVID-19 patient needing operation. And it became, it, it was the most downloaded um, article from the Canadian Journal that year. In fact, it was the most downloaded uh, article in the Canadian Journal of all time at that point in time. So uh, obviously all of us were really focused, the whole world was focused on COVID-19. And in the interim period, after we emerged from COVID-19, uh, things had also changed. Uh, obviously, the president of Singapore Society had changed. The president of president of the World Congress, World, World Federation had changed. The CEO of uh, WFS had changed, and also uh, we had changed our PCO at that point in time. So it was almost a new beginning, and it was time for decisions. The first question was: Should we do it in person, or should we have it hybrid, or even at one point we con consider it? totally um, having it virtual. Um, it, it was a period of, of, of great uh, difficulty because we needed to decide the number of tracks that we needed to do, how many people would actually come to, to attend an in-person conference after, after the, the pandemic. Would people actually be able to travel? We know that at that point in time, the number of flights were really reduced. There was a problem with social distancing if, if we had it in the venue, would it mean that people would have to sit far apart? Would it affect our numbers? We were very worried about costs because Singapore society is a very small organization. 
and uh, certainly something as expensive as Sunday City would have bankrupted the uh, organization. And of course, most worrying was that there were multiple new strains coming out, if you remember, different types, different strains of the COVID-19 virus. And there was a great worry that there will be a resurgence of the virus, shutdown of the borders, and that would lead to total uh, catastrophic failure of the conference. So these were, these were things that were uh, uh, at the back of our minds as we move forward. So with collaboration and coordination and as consultation with the World Federation and with Wayne, we then, then decided that we should push for an in-person meeting. We were very modest in our expectations. We expected, we only aimed for 3,500 participants in person. Uh, this is mainly because of, uh, uh, in case it, you know, it, because we really didn't know how many people could travel. Uh, this is less than, to put this into perspective, this is less than half of what Hong Kong in 2016 had. Um, we weren't sure about number for virtual. Uh, we just looked at the numbers that attended the uh, virtual World Congress from Prague, and we decided that maybe this perhaps the same number uh, would, would attend virtually. Um, so so this this was really a, a a best guess. However, once we decided on the program, and once we decided that we have, will have the, about the same number of tracks, different tracks as Hong Kong, then we really ran straight into it, and we wanted it to be holistic, to cover the whole gamut from students to be. Uh, from novice practitioners to advanced practitioners, for it to be practical and for it to be cutting edge at the same time. We wanted enough breath to excite people to, to, so that they will come. We also needed to meet DEI standards. We needed to make sure that our speakers and the topics that we choose will meet the diversity, equality, and inclusiveness standards. The other thing that was uh, was that we wanted to include our neighbors. So Singapore is located in Southeast Asia, surrounded by Southeast Asian countries, of which all of us belong to the Confederation of ASEAN Societies of Anesthesiologists. There are 10 countries involved. And we wanted to give CASA a track of its own because it was the 50th anniversary of CASA in 2024. The most important thing of the whole thing was the selection of the track chairs. Because the program in itself, while the scientific committee had generally guided the track chairs, the track chairs were free to choose the topics as well as the, spe as the speakers. We encourage the track chairs to include both local and regional faculty. Some of these numbers have already been shared by Wayne. So in the end, we, we, we planned for 3,500. We were lucky to get oh, just short of 5,000 participants in person. Virtual, there was a big drop off. I think uh, the whole world had Zoom fatigue by then. And we had only had 573 uh, virtual participants. Uh, Almost half the people who attended the, 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 the in-person meeting also attended workshops. That really shows how important workshops are in the success of any uh, conference. Uh, 2,200 uh, workshop registrants. We had uh, PBLDs were fully subscribed as well. Again, uh, demonstrating that there's a great appetite for PBLDs, 432 PBLDs. About 1,600 abstracts were submitted. This was, this was a little bit more than what we expected. In Hong Kong, there was about 1,000, so it was more than what we expected. In the end, we, we could accept 1,209. There were, in total, 187 uh, sessions. There were 527 faculty, as mentioned by uh, uh, Carolina, that, that this, this came from a variety of countries. The, the top countries, in, in terms of, of attendance, the top country was Australia, uh, followed by Singapore and the United States. Um, in the virtual, the top country was Philippines, followed by India and uh, and Australia. Overall, uh, Asia represented forty five percent of of the participants or the registrants. As was mentioned earlier, the, the feedback was good, so we we, we are very thankful that the, the 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 our track chairs and our faculty and I think um the whole whole the the way it was organized. Uh, came out uh, there. There was quite quite high overall satisfaction. Um, uh, the the one of the things that was that was highlighted was there was really quality qu uh, quality and informative nature of the presentations. 
the one of the questions that were asked to the participants is whether the Congress fulfilled their educational goals and expected learning outcomes. And you can see that if you include the two numbers, 97% uh, uh, of them fulfilled somewhat or very much. We also asked how useful was it to their professional activity and 90% found it useful or extremely useful. So we are really, uh, as a scientific committee, we are really uh, happy uh, with, with this feedback. The most useful tracks was, as expected, the uh, core, core things that we, we, we deal, it, deal with as anesthesiologists on a day-to-day -day basis, which is airway management, regional anesthesia, and, and gene tests, uh, neuroscience. However, you know, like every big Congress, you know, there are always issues and problems. And I think it's important not so much to, uh, um, to harp on it, but, but I think we can all learn lessons from, you know, the issues and problems from various Congresses. I, one of the big problems that we had was, was workshops, and this causes a lot of stress towards the end. Uh, there, were, there were a variety of reasons why this happened. Um, uh, let, me, let me just enumerate three. One of it was that um, uh, some of the uh, workshop, uh, the people who organized the workshop, they wanted certain sponsors in. Uh, unfortunately, these sponsors were not part of the uh, world, the, the the actual World Congress. But but because they had you know they had state of the art equipment that uh, with the the, uh, the 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 faculty from the workshop wanted to show the the delegates. But we could we had a great difficulty in bringing that in because they were not sponsors of the World Congress. So this is something that uh, so that there's a balance between you know beating uh, finances uh, the financial considerations of not letting a company come in through the back door, as it were. As, at, at the same time, on the other hand, we are trying to show, you know, we're trying to show what's the uh, newest and best in, in, in uh, equipment that is. So, so, so there was a little bit of, of that, that issue that, that, that required a bit of, uh, required a bit of uh, resolving. The other thing, of course, was equipment sourcing. I think uh, equipment sourcing was actually uh, quite confusing because, um, for example, I was asked at a very late stage to, to look for 3D echo machines because the echo machines that was sourced uh, was for uh, gynecology and, and, and so it did not have 3D features. So this was some of, some of the, the, the issues that uh, led to last minute um, frantic calling to the companies uh, to, to try to get the thing. And the thing, the other thing was, was, was of course, was, was that we, we found it very difficult to borrow equipment from our local hospitals. Uh, our local hospitals were concerned, particularly with the, with the simulation uh, equipment, about loaning out the, the, this um, equipment. And I think the assumption at one, at one point was that it would, it, we would be able to borrow equipment from our local hospitals and it turned out that we could not. And basically that led to, again, trying to look for uh, borrowing equipment from, uh, from, from industry also, we were, we were actually thinking of buying equipment, uh, you know, we were so desperate. But in, fortunately, most of these issues were eventually solved. Uh, a lot of um, behind the scenes, um, uh, as you were, you know, we, 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 we asked for a lot of favors and, 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 and this is something that caused quite a bit of stress towards the end. The other thing that, that was bit feedback was the uh, local faculty felt that there was lack of engagement. Some of the local faculty, not all. Uh, part of the reason is that the track chairs, of course, international. They did not. Some of them often did not know a local contact. Uh, not 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 every track was as fortunate as Chin Test, which you had which neuroscience. You had someone local. So uh, several local faculty felt underappreciated because they had no opportunity to do to do three track tasks. So as a background, uh, we expected every speaker to do three tasks uh, minimally, so that before they get free registration for the World Congress and. Uh, the local faculty uh, felt that they did not have the opportunity uh, to do so. Um, so this is uh, again, um, but we often needed a local faculty, especially in the last minute when uh, to fill in for for people who did not turn up or 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 to you know to to to, to get things uh, done. So these were some of the issues and problems that we faced towards the 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 start of the conference. A couple of other things that the food for thought. Um, uh, the Asian Oscillation Regional Section of the WFSA is actually the, the section that's in charge of this part of the world. Uh, and as I said, we, we plan a track for CASA, but unfortunately we overlooked the uh, ARS 
during the initial planning, we finally gave them a symposium in global health. But I think it's quite, uh, uh, you know, if you, if, because Asia, Australia, if you include uh, Asia plus Australia, Australia, um, you know, there's over 60% of delegates came from the AARS region. And so maybe a better, we, we should have engaged them a little bit earlier, a little bit more dynamically, I guess. But it's something that we 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 did not do. So maybe perhaps in in the future, in an Africa with Africa, it might be good to to engage the Africa African regional section for 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 Morocco. The other thing, of course, is language. Um, one of the questions that was asked to me is why, as a World Congress, why did we limit only to English? Uh, it was put to me that Mandarin Chinese is widely spoken in this region. Uh, not only mainland China with you know with one point three billion people. But also Taiwan, Hong Kong, Malaysia, Singapore, Mandarin Chinese is wide, uh, widely spoken. And, and, and I guess it was, a, in a sense, a missed opportunity for us to have a Chinese speaking, a, a Chinese language track. Uh, similarly, I, I would expect you have in Africa, maybe, you know, it, uh, whether it's French or Arabic will be, uh, will be, will be interesting uh, or, or, you, or, you know, Spanish in Latin America, for example. So, so I think this is some of the things that we have to think about. In fact, in, in the, in, in the uh, final report, there was a statement on diversity in language preferences, and they said that the mentions uh, that, that, that um, the attendees could benefit from this additional language support, indicating that the, the, the Congress could enhance uh, its inclusivity. So this is something to think about. But at the end of the day, everything went well. So I want to want to thank I, I think the last few minutes to thank everyone, uh, particularly uh, President Wayne Morris, and the track chairs and faculty. Because without track chairs and faculty, none of this would have worked. Uh, President Morris did something really good. Wayne did something really great. He he, the the whole program was planned by the scientific committee and the track chairs and the faculty, uh, uh, except for the Harold Griffith lecture, and the Harold Griffith lecture um had the most attendees, not only in person. But it was also had the most attendees online, and it was the second most downloaded uh, session. So you know, it, it, uh, he he really uh, win outperformed the entire scientific committee. Yeah, but but jokes aside, I I think it's very I I want to thank Wayne for his uh, for his very wise choice uh, of choosing a, a great topic and a great speaker for the Herography lecture. That is a that Herography lecture is is the the jewel of the scientific program and I, I'm, 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 I'm very thankful it was so well received. So, so uh, congratulations to Wayne. I also want to thank all delegates and attendees. Obviously the, the meeting is for delegates and attendees without which it will be useless to hold one. The scientific, my fellow scientific committee, uh, uh, Sophia Chu, who was always super logical and uh, a, a real diplomatic uh, person, uh, Professor Tony Jean, who shared his experience from Hong Kong 2016 with us. Uh, uh, Carolina, our president-elect, who's um, who who really made sure that we met our DEI standards. But most of all, I think I would like to thank Christian Werner. Christian Werner led our scientific committee. He was truly uh, like a well-run, or well, he's German, so I would say a well-run Mercedes, you know, where, where everything was smooth and he and uh, logical, and he was really the, the cornerstone of our, com our committee. He couldn't come to Singapore for personal reasons, but, uh, but, but, but I want, want, want to take this opportunity to thank him uh, uh, for, for his contribution. Uh, also want to thank the local organizing committee, as shown in the picture below, uh, Yim Chik Fu, who, was, who did our finances, Professor Chan Yu Wing, our president, uh, Sophia Chu, uh, president of society, uh, Philip Singh, who did our finance, and of course, Dr. John Jin Ted. And thank the COC led by Wayne, and as well as ICS, uh, especially Cheryl and all the helpers, and most, and also my colleagues and my friends, you know, for 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 doing a, a lot, both from uh, hospital and from industry, who put up with a lot of last minute um, requests from me. So uh, really have to thank them for making this possible, and and everyone else. Uh, I hope that for those of you who attended the attended and came to Singapore, I hope you enjoyed your time in Singapore. Please feel free to come back to to visit us. Uh, from so I would like to thank you on behalf of the Singapore Society of Anesthesia for making the World Congress of Anesthesiologists 2024 a success. So thank you very much.
Thank you very much, Leanne Carr. And I echo those words of thanks. Uh, with uh, an event like the World Congress, it really is a team effort and there are many moving parts and there's a lot of goodwill, a lot of hard work uh, done by a lot of people. So thank you very much. We're going to go straight on to Professor Tony Jin, who was one of the co-chairs of the Scientific Committee. Tony is a professor at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Over to you, Tony. Hello, everyone. Uh, I've been involved in the Scientific Committee for the last three World Congresses, and currently I'm the chair of the WFSA Scientific Programme Committee. Just to let you know about the philosophy behind the WCA program, since uh, 2016, it's been organized as a collection of independent subspecialty meetings. The reason for that is we know that most of us have one or two main clinical interests and usually a professional interest such as education or safety on the side. And increasingly our CME and CPD are obtained from going to subspecialty or special interest group meetings like ASRA, ESRA, or obstetric groups, rather than the General National Annual Congress, which often has very limited number of sessions in our area of expertise, unless it's the theme of the year. So the World Congress aims to provide world-class academic content by offering multiple independent subspecialty track programs so that delegates can keep up to date in their main clinical interests, also have opportunities to learn in their secondary interests, and perhaps find some surprises along the way in other sessions. And the fact that there are so many sessions, although previously commented, you know, people have so much choice, they don't know what to do. The fact that we now have on-demand viewing of all lecture sessions means that everyone can catch up on everything that they're interested in. And so these were the tracks that we had in Singapore, headed up by experts in their fields. And it really is the chance to meet you know, people who are principal investigators of evidence-changing studies, editors of textbooks, uh, editors-in-chiefs of major journals. And certainly, in keeping with the subspecialty theme, we place a lot of emphasis on the abstracts. The research abstracts are all presented together so that all the faculty and delegates in that track can get together and network. We offer prizes for the best basic science and clinical research, and here we have listed the prize winner for basic science, Li Jian Pei from the Peking Union Medical College. And the clinical abstract was actually shared. We had two first prizes between Sunny Liu from the Washington University of St. Louis and Dong Xing Wang from Peking University First Hospital. So we really try to emphasize academic science excellence uh, and evidence that will affect your clinical practice in our scientific program. We also very much like to try and be innovative. And certainly one of the comments that came back was they found that for Singapore, the AI section was very innovative. For example, we had a session uh, run by Stephen Schaefer and Pamela Flood from Stanford and Valentina Bellini and Eleanor Bignami from Palmer, where we actually on live asked questions to both ChatGPT and Gemini, asking questions about anesthesia. And there's a lot of hype, sure, about uh, AI, but your patients are probably asking JetGPT questions about the anesthetic they're about to receive. So it's worthwhile for all of us to actually see what ChatGPT answers are giving to these patients. And although we know that the AI is very good in terms of reproducing um, text that's available, I was really impressed with the question, the prompt, explain the mechanism of action of sevoflurane to a teenager. So someone who's you know, maybe only 13 or 14. And this is the result. Oops. Think of your brain as a giant party. All the different parts of your brain are guests at the party and they chat with each other to keep things running smoothly. Now this is a great analogy for a teenager. Parties need the right atmosphere. Sometimes you want them calm, other times, you know, more active. And the brain's the same. It needs the right balance for you to feel awake, focused, or sleepy. And sevoflurane is the ultimate party crasher. 
that basically slows down communication between different parts of the brain. And again, I thought this was quite innovative. How exactly does Sive Florine do it? Your brain cells, which are the guests of the party, talk to each other through tiny doorways. Sevoflurane hangs out at these doorways and changes how these doorways act. Some become harder to open, some stay open too long. They disrupt the usual chatter, making it harder for the brain signals. And I think this is really a great analogy to someone you know, who doesn't have, of course, the basic science knowledge that we have on how general anesthetics work. And then to top this off, uh, Stephen Schaefer asked the uh, Gemini to render this explanation in verse. An iambic pentameter, your brain, a feast of thoughts, both loud and bright, where signals dance in ever-changing light, each cell a guest with whispers all their own, they shape your world on paths and roadways grown. And it goes on, and it did this in real time, well essentially in a few seconds. It created this essentially very long verse of the previous explanation. I thought this was just fantastic as an example of AI. And Stephen Schaefer is also the editor-in-chief of the ASA Monitor. And you can find the full text. He wrote up about this experience in the ASA Monitor newsletter uh, on March the 26th. And you can find the full text of both the original uh, response, the uh, iambic pentameter, and also the response in the style of David Attenborough uh, in this article. In terms of AI, I think it really was going to be uh, something that's going to affect us in the future. We had a session on AI and computer vision. And the talks, especially for those who always find, who are new to ultrasound, who are a bit old ultrasound, who find the snowstorm uh, when you're looking at the screen, will be interested to find that there are now many companies bringing out their assisted ultrasound uh, to help you identify nerves and vessels. And some of them will even tell you how to orient the probe uh, to get you a better picture. And on top of that, there are also, we had Alex Sear, who is a well-known obstetric anesthetist, now CEO of the large KK Women's and Children's Hospital. And he was saying that not only will AI affect us directly in our practice, but the effect on hospital management is really significant. And he gave examples of how in certainly KK Women's Hospital, the uh, AI-powered spinal landmark identification system and the automation for fast neuroimaging for children had really transformed and improved patient care. So future directions, we had feedback from over 3,200 delegates. And again, the quality of scientific content was judged to be excellent. We do take notice of this feedback and we're really looking forward to organizing the program for the next World Congress and beyond. So certainly join us uh, for Marrakesh. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tony. I, I wish I'd been at that AI session. That's just an amazing response about uh, sevoflurane's action on the brain. I think that's great. We've now come to the Q&A session and thank you to all the speakers for keeping your, your talk so uh, succinct. Uh, I'd like to just get the ball rolling. Uh, well, now the first thing is, if you would like to ask a question, please go to the bottom of the, the Zoom screen and there is a Q&A box. You don't just, you can ask questions in a very broad way. You don't just have to ask questions specifically about the information presented. Uh, I would like to just get the speakers to think about what was their favorite lecture during World, the World Congress in Singapore. Uh, I don't know whether anybody's can answer that straight away. Tony, would you put it down as that AI lecture or have you got another favorite? Uh, I actually like uh, Jamie Slay's lecture. He unfortunately got COVID just before the World Congress could not come and had to submit a, a video lecture. Uh, but his talk may be a bit esoteric. It was about uh, anesthesia, hysteresis, and neuroinertia. And it really looked at the problem of, you know, is essentially going to sleep the reverse of waking up? 
you know, in some ways we pride ourselves as pharmacologists and but yeah, we always have this little black box of how does consciousness, how do anesthetics actually work? You know, our fundamental sort of pharmacology is still a bit unknown. So that for me, but yeah, that's for the nerds. Maybe I think uh, I think it's a fascinating lecture. So certainly uh, if you have a chance, that's worth looking at when you feel you need a bit of intellectual stimulation. So that's Jay. Thank you for that. So that's Jamie Slay, and I know that Jamie's an expert on on BIS and other um, awareness monitoring and that sort of thing. Is that is that yes. correct? That's right. It's in the technology and pharmacology uh, program as the first uh, talk, uh, along with Talmadge Egan about uh, paradox. Right. Great. Both thank you. Open. Thank you. Chin Ted or Lian Ka, does any lecture or uh, event stick out to you from the World Congress? A particularly memorable lecture? Uh, for the lecture, I found the Hieroglyphus lecture the most interesting, personally. But uh, for a non-lecture, I would say it would be the uh, very big um, industry exhibition at Suntech. I really went around the um, booths and exhibits. I enjoyed uh, speaking to the vendors and then looking at the new equipment. Yeah. I, I enjoyed the industry area as well. I thought it was a good space and there was a lot of energy. And if I was asked that same question, I would, about my favorite lecture, I would say the Harold Griffith and that's partly because I didn't get to see many other lectures. I was involved in a lot of meetings, but we had two amazing lectures during the Harold Griffith session. One was by Kevin Fong, and he called his lecture, We're Wrong About Risk. And the other one was by Janneke Mellon Olsen, and she talked about quality of care, a human perspective, and both gave very memorable, thought-provoking lectures, uh, and uh, I think those lectures will stay with many of us to with many of us for a long time. Uh, Lian Ka, have you got any suggestions of? Yeah, I, I well, I've you... mainly followed the uh, cardiac anesthesia track because that's my area of interest. I I think that the, the thing that struck me was that the last session of the cardiac anesthesia track, which was on Thursday morning. Uh, just before the closing ceremony, uh, which was on, I think was on a, a review of 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 the latest uh, publications in 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 cardiac anesthesia, and it was a full house standing room only, uh, for the last session, of the last day of the congress, which was uh, you know really 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 demonstrated uh the 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 strength in depth of the uh the the, the you know the, of of the program. So uh yeah, so I think that stood out for me. Hmm. We had a three and a half day program, didn't we? The scientific yeah. program. Um, there were workshops before that scientific program started, but it was probably one of the best attended closing ceremonies that I, I've been to. So many people did stay for the length of the scientific program, which I think I think is really encouraging for us because five days is probably too long for most people, but three and a half days is perhaps right. Uh, if any of the audience would also like to put in the Q and A box your favourite lecture, if you attended, if you went to the World Congress, you are very welcome to. I'm going to go to a question in the box, and that comes from uh, Merlin Shalini Ruth. Oh, here we go. Oh, Tony's just answered it. Tony, would you like to comment on that question, please? All right. The question was, when would the abstracts for the e-posters be published in the supplement, e-supplement of anesthesia and analgesia? Uh, unfortunately, I can't give you a definite answer for this. The, uh, the professional conference organiser is supposed to prepare the file, the PDF file of abstracts, and send it to the publishers of ANA, which is uh, you know, looked after by the ARS. And the uh, professional conference organisers have had some problems preparing the file. We are constantly chasing uh, both the publishers and the PCO for this. We can't give you a definite date at the moment, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, perhaps another comment from me uh, uh, about 
four years ago now, the WFSA board decided that the World Congress should go to a two-yearly meeting. It had previously been a four-yearly meeting. And a key um, component of that is that the Congress will shift between five geographical regions in a predictable way. So the next Congress in 2026 is going to be in the Africa Middle East region, and I'll give you some information about that soon. The Congress in 2028 will be in the region of the Americas, and it's going to be held in Vancouver, Canada. In 2030, it'll be the turn of South and East Asia, South Central East Asia. Uh, so that it could end up being anywhere uh, from uh, India to Japan to somewhere in Central Asia. And in 2032, it will be in Europe. In 2034, it will be back to the Southeast Asia, Australia, New Zealand, Pacific part of the world. So we find, I think this is something that is a very exciting thing for the World Congress because it will give more anesthesiologists from all around the world a chance to go to the World Congress to participate and to be involved in other ways. I think another way that we can uh, encourage participation is by keeping the World Congress not only a meeting that can be attended in person, but can be attended virtually. In other words, making this a hybrid Congress. But I just want the panelists' thoughts. What are some of the pros and cons of a, a hybrid Congress? I, I think uh, that would be costs because you'll be having to provide the content on two platforms. And uh, what uh, Professor T mentioned, uh, that is probably a, quite a fair amount of Zoom fatigue. Um, so if uh, we have a physical Congress that will provide um, a bigger opportunity for, for bonding and get together. Yeah, I completely agree. I think cost is a big deterrent. Uh, uh, it's, 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 uh, especially if we had it like the way we did, which is uh, having some live, um, some live sessions as well. So I, yeah, cost is, a, is an issue. Of course, cost, it works both ways, doesn't it? Because cost is a deterrent for some people, especially from less resourced parts of the world, to attend the Congress in person. So uh, from a WFSA point of view, um, certainly our, we made a commitment for this to be a hybrid meeting going forward. But we do recognise that it is more expensive. Uh, it may not be possible. What we found in Singapore is that we could show a limited amount of the Congress live, virtually, but most of it had to be on demand later on. Okay, thank you. We do have a question related to that. I'll just bring it up. Till when can we view the on-demand sessions? Now, from memory, and Rosa, perhaps you can correct me on this, but I think that was six months from the date of the Congress. Uh, Leanne Carr is nodding his head. Yes. So, time... so, so the on-demand sessions are now available for those who register, who attended WCA, and they, um, but then in about three weeks, at the end of, at the start of September, we will publish the most popular sessions of WCA on WFSA's YouTube channel, and then they will be available to the public. And there is no deadline towards them. In principle, they will be available um, forever. So, yeah. But it won't be the, the entire selection of sessions as they are available now in the app. Thank you, Rosa. Yeah, no problem. Um, okay, I don't see any other quick. Oh, hold on. What have we got in the QA box? Oh, yes. Okay. Would any of the panelists like to make any other comments? Uh, we have got five minutes left and we will finish this on time at um, 
nine o'clock in the evening my time. I just want to wish our friends in Morocco all the best in organizing the World Congress. Yes, it's, uh, it's going to be an exciting meeting. And I guess with all of these congresses, we're building on the work of people who have hosted the congresses previously. I mean, Tony Jin is a good example of that because he's now been... He's worked on the scientific uh, program for at least three congresses. Is that correct, Tony? Yes, uh, Hong Kong, Pride, Singapore. Also, we're pretty much you know well into the Morocco program, and even starting discussions about the Vancouver program already. Yes. And do you think it's going to become easier with programming when there is a more frequent meeting, the two yearly meeting? rather than reinventing the wheel every four years. Oh, I think so. As uh, as I say, previously, every four years, new country, you know, new WFSA executive, new PCO, uh, really things were, um, I suppose, a, new, a fresh every time. But we hope to have some standardization, some standard operating procedures, you know, some manual for the core parts of the WCA program going forward, uh, both on the scientific side and the administrative side. So hopefully that will be good. Okay, well, I think that's an appropriate segue to some information about the next World Congress, which is being held in Marrakesh, Morocco, on the 15th to the 19th of April in 2026. So that's only 18 months away, as I'm sure Tony is very aware. The time goes very fast in the lead up to these meetings. Here are some dates for your diary. Uh, so the, we will be calling for abstracts on the 1st of June next year, and there'll be a relatively short window for abstract submission. We're expecting that registration for the 2026 World Congress will open early next year. Please have a look at those. Um, or, or you can follow the World Congress uh, conversation via any of those links there. Now, I can't see it. Oh, there's also a QR code in the top right if you want to scan that now, and that will give you uh, immediate um, link to more information about the World Congress. Okay, another thing that we will be doing over the next year and a half is frequent webinars, basically toast tasters for the World Congress in Morocco. Tony, would you like to comment on these? Uh, okay, so if we plan to introduce uh, WCA Morocco by having every track uh, use some of the faculty for Morocco to give a uh, lecture about some topical uh, subject in that track as an introduction. And I think uh, the first one, critical care with Samir Jabir Aliazale, well-known critical care uh, specialists will start off in September. And we hope to have one every month uh, until the World Congress, covering all the tracks. I think that's a wonderful, uh, wonderful idea. And we look forward to those webinars. You'll note that in October, the topic will be obstetric anesthesia, then in November, regional anesthesia, and in December, airway management but we will anticipate these webinars will occur regularly during 2025 next year in the lead up to the next World Congress. Uh, Rosa, are there any more comments or questions that we need to cover or is, is that it? No, I don't think so. Just for everyone to know, this webinar is being recorded and it's going to be available. You will receive a link tomorrow if you want to watch it again, or if you missed this session live. And yeah, and then if you were not able to attend WCA in Singapore, 
remember that you will be able to watch some of the most popular sessions next from next month on our YouTube channel. So yeah, just stay updated. Keep um, keep an eye out on our emails or messages on socials. Thank you. So I'm now going to close this webinar, but I'd like to say a few words of thanks. Thank you to our interpreters. They do an amazing job. Uh, so thank you for being here this evening or this morning in your time. Thank you to Rosa and other members of the WFSA Secretariat for um, all the work behind the scenes to make this and the other webinars happen. Special thanks to our speakers who have given up their time to present this evening. So thank you to Carolina in Honduras, also Chin Ted and Lian Ka in Singapore, and Tony in Hong Kong. We really appreciate you taking part in this webinar. And finally, thank you to you, the audience, for joining us. Uh, we really see this webinar as being more of a taster for really good educational events to come, and we hope that you will join us during those events. Thank you, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time.